What is up guys? Uh, we are about to be, or we are in Joliet, Illinois. We're about to deliver to a warehouse here, so I figured I'd start filming. We're about to take our exit in about a mile, and we'll just see how it goes here. Another Joliet run out of my region. <coughs> yeah, I got a, kind, of, kind of a little cough lately. It's kind of not good. It's cold up here, man. I just came from down south. Where was I at? I was in Tennessee. It was actually kind of nice in Tennessee. The last couple days I was down in that area. Now I come up to Chicago and it's 19 degrees outside right now. And I'm like, man, I'm back in this frigid north. Good news is there's no weather. So it's supposed to be nice the next couple of days. And I will take it, man. All right, so we're taking this exit right here. It's gonna be right off of this exit, not far. As you can see, all the distribution buildings and stuff to the right. Um, we are three minutes away right now. My appointment time is at nine. It's 6.30 in the morning, but. One quarter mile, turn right on Bulldog Road, then take the first left. I called CFI and asked them, I said, hey, uh, can I deliver this load early? Because I'm running out of time. I got an hour and 44 minutes turn left right on my clock. The traffic light, then take the first left. And they were like, yes, this load can be delivered, you know, as soon as you can get there. So I was like, okay, thanks. So that is what we're going to do. We're not going to do. There goes my CB going off. Speaking of which, somebody recently said something. I've had quite a few people say this, but somebody said something several videos ago. It's like something about the CB. I can't remember what they said. They, yeah, 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 yeah. they said something about it and then they said, but you never use yours. My CB is on all the time. I will usually turn it down but while I'm filming before I get to a customer, um, just because, you know, it interrupts the video constantly. But 90% of the time that I'm driving this truck, my CB is on. I want people to tell me Rock Creek Boulevard. On the left. If there's something wrong with my truck, or if you know something's going on, or if there's a hazard up the way on the road, or whatever the case may be, I want people to tell me, and I do believe the CB is a valuable tool. So for you guys to say you don't ever, you no, know, I don't talk on it much. I sure don't, but I listen. Sure do. All right, guys, uh, I'm watching my satellite now. There's one truck behind me. Yep, go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. That's better for the both. That's better for the both of us, Holmes. You just go on ahead and pass old Dave so he can take his Tom Granny Smith back here. Just driving Miss Daisy is what I'm doing, taking my sweet time. Although time is of the essence with my hour and 42 minutes left. I had to drive all through the night to get this load here on time, so. All right, so the northwest corner of this building is the entrance. It actually said that in the load notes that I got for this load. So I know where to turn into. And we're gonna be there in just a second. It's not this, wait, why does this building look so huge? Okay, it's gonna be the next building. It's not this building. Nobody's behind me, so we're good. Yeah, it was 30 through here. I was going 25, but he wasn't having it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be this building right here, but I don't think... Yeah, see, that says DCS, shipping and such. Arriving at 4000 Rock Creek Boulevard. Because the there's multiple companies in this building here. But CFI said the load notes that the entrance was right here because it's like suite B or D or something. I can't remember, I have to look. Anyways, they said it was right here. That's why I know, because I read the load notes. That back there was uh, like J.B. Hunt. So this is where I'm supposed to be. Oh man, they got a call box here. Oh, if they're not here, I'm not gonna get in. This is it, my friends. Pull all the way up. Oh wait, they gave me a code. There's a code. Yes, I'm there. Hold on, guys. I gotta look up the code. I forgot they gave. They did give me a code. Oh, 
crap, it's freaking cold out there. It didn't work, guys. I'm, I'm gonna be stuck sitting here until they get here. I don't know where else to go. I guess I could back up right there in their little car parking lot. I could, I could make this turn, but I don't know. It didn't work. I tried it like three times, it didn't open, so I'm like, okay. Um, I was gonna get my jacket though and use the call box to see if they'll allow me through the call box. If somebody is here, I don't know. Um, the reason I have my flashers on is because it says in the load notes, four-way flashers on while in the yard, so I just threw them on so I didn't forget. Um, but let's go call. Let me grab my paperwork in case they need it. Something off of it. Let's turn the truck off. Freezing up here. Right, let's try this. Please hold while I try to connect you. Da, 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 da. Black horse. Oh uh, yeah, I'm with CFI here to make a delivery. They gave me a gate code, but it didn't work. <laughs> Are you dropping off for Black Horse or? For Black Horse, it's they got me dispatched here to Black Horse. Oh, okay, okay, so you can go any door that is open from, from 55 to 58. Okay. And then uh, just press uh, the uh, call box, the one in the bottom. Yeah. Okay, that's the one I'm talking to on you now. Oh, you, oh yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> do, I, uh, do I open the seal and open my doors and everything? Yes. Okay, uh, 55 to 58, right? Yeah, and then you can just come inside and then they will sign your paper. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, the door is on 49 door, okay? 49 door? Yeah, to, to come inside. Okay, gotcha. Appreciate it. And please break the seal. Will do. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> stay open gate. Stay open. Stay open gate. <laughs> One truck. I gotta get up here before the gate closes on me. There we go. Oof. Okay, let's get over to the left. Yeah, we know. It's cold. And the wind is blowing. We know. <laughs> okay, so I can go ahead and open the doors, break the seal. Any door 55 to 58 or 9. We'll just say 58 to be safe. So 55 to 58, any door. I was trying to remember all the information she gave me. And then you go to 49 to go check in. Because I don't think we're allowed to stay in the truck here. And then I can open the doors, break the seal, and I have to bring the seal in with me. So quite a bit of things here that we have to uh, do. I do remember it saying in the load notes 10 miles an hour here too, so I can speed up a little bit faster than five. Because like I said, I'm running out of time, so I want to hurry up and hopefully be able to get unloaded early and then be able to uh, have enough time to get to a truck stop or somewhere to stop for the day. My schedule's all jacked up. I started driving like 8 p.m. That's why I'm almost out of time now. Uh, okay, here we go. It's gonna be right up here. It's 50, is it? No, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, this is 56, the, both of these right here. So yeah, this spot right here is where we're gonna do it. It's where we're gonna do the D, we're gonna do the dirty. My camera's gonna die soon, but I have another battery that has a little charge on it as well. So. Oh, I didn't grab my gloves. It's cold out here. I don't want to be freezes your hands if you don't have your gloves. Oh. Yeah, I forgot my gloves before to open the doors and your hands will freeze from the cold ass metal. You know what I mean? So oh. hope my GoPro don't die and they'll at least film me getting backed in and whatnot. jacket so I don't lose it. 
Is it in there? Yeah. Okay. All right. I do everything just like my trainer taught me. This one doesn't, the bungees are broken off of this one. Oh, hell. This one, yeah. Oh, come on, you piece. I don't know. <laughs> Back it right here, man. Oh. Man, it's so chilly. All right, here we go now. This would be an easy one. Plenty of room, and there's like a spot and a half here, <laughs> basically. Make sure there's a door there. Yeah. Eh, it's kind of weird <laughs> that that line is very close to that other trailer there. I could straight back this. I really could have kept turning and straight backed it, but it is what it is. I've been straight backing a lot lately, but for some reason, I just wanted to do this one like this, man. You gotta be careful because that line is very close to that other trailer. Oh yeah, we cleared it nicely. Start getting under it now, Dave. I might've waited too long. I think I waited too long. I did. I waited way too long to get under it. But, you know, that's just playing it safe. Let's just get back in the spot now. There we go. Let's pull up and to the right. Back to the left. Oh, there we go. Oh, I jacked that up, didn't I? See, that line is very close to that trailer on that side, but I got it now. Got to get the trailer pushed a little bit more to the left there. There we go. Now let's straighten the trailer up. There we go. against it. Come on. There we go. Perfect. That was a nice little gentle bump. Whew. Okay, what do I got to do? Okay, we do have to chalk the wheels. I know that. Make sure that's good. I mean, that, look, that looks pretty straight to me. Yeah, looks pretty straight. I do know we have to chalk the wheels. Chalk them. Chalkity chalk chalk. There we go. Chalkity chalk chalk. And let's make sure we're flush. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty good there, bub. Alright. Got my seal. Got everything. Um, hey, I have two seals in here. I have a CFI seal from at some point I took off. And yeah. Okay guys, so yeah, we did everything. Chalk the wheels and we have to give them the keys to my tractor. Um, they get the keys because they're, uh, you know, like really 
safety oriented here to make sure that the tractor isn't going to move and they have a driver's lounge that you can sit in and uh, hang out so yeah i'm gonna go in there and do that i won't be able to come back to my truck so that's that and uh yeah i'll just uh be back with you guys whenever this ends well guys they don't actually start unloading until 8 30. i walked in there there's no like check-in like you know most places you go to there's like an office like a shipping or receiving office or whatever this is just a warehouse Luckily, this black horse guy that came in right after me and backed into that spot, he was walking in at the same time I was, and he allowed me in there. He was like, come on. I was like, I can come in? He was like, yeah. He's like, I was like, what, what do I do? Who do I talk to? He's like, that guy on the forklift over there. I'm like, okay. So I just waltzed in through this huge warehouse, just like, you know, not knowing what the hell I'm supposed to do. Got a forklift's like, what door are you in? I was like, uh, I couldn't remember what number I was at. I said, I think it's 56. He was like, go over there and open up 56 and see if that's yours. I go up to the dock door and just to let you know, you know, the only type of warehousing work that I've ever done was when I drove the box truck for the place I worked for and then the place in Jackson where we went to go get our loads. And both, in order to open and close the dock doors, you had a button, you know, a, the green button and the red button for close, or, or sorry, the red for stop and the green for, you know, uh, up and down. Anyways, so long story short, I walk over to the door and I'm looking, I'm like, where the hell is a damn button around here? Where's the, how do I open this thing? And he yells from across the thing, he goes, you can just pull it up. I'm like, oh, okay, stupid. Sure, this door just slides up smooth as hell. And then uh, I was like, well, I was like, well, what do I do? And he was like, you can sit in your truck. I was like, oh, I can? Because I knew we weren't supposed to sit in the truck. But I'm guessing since they can't start until 8.30, he said come back in like right before 8.30 is what he told me to do and check in. So I was like, okay, so I got an hour and a half to kill, guys. So I'm going to like sit here and hang out. But yeah, CFI, I guess, just wanted me to get here because the dispatcher was like, because I asked her, can I, I said, can I deliver it early or do I need to kill some time? Because probably what I would have done if I would have known that they couldn't take this early is I probably went to a truck stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, had some food, took a shower, whatever. Just kill some time down the road. But instead, uh, she was like, oh, no, that load, you can you can go take that there as soon as you get it. But that's probably they just want me to get here and not dilly-dally, I guess. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty decent at planning. I've never been laid on a load to where, you know, I, I didn't get it done. So, man, I think about that. It's been nine months that I've been, I, I ain't never been laid on a load. I don't know how often drivers are laid on loads. Like, I don't know if that's like a common thing in the trucking industry or not. But, I mean, there's been times where they gave me a load that I possibly couldn't do it with my time. And I let them know well ahead of time, hey, this time that y'all put me on ain't going to work out. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I've never like just been late from dicking off or anything or oversleeping or anything like that. There's been a couple of scary moments where... I did wake up late, but luckily I still had enough time to get there. And the reason was, back during the summer when I let my truck run every night, sometimes my phone would still be connected to the Bluetooth. And I would turn on my phone. I always use my phone alarm. I just need to get like a real alarm in here, honestly. Like an electric alarm that just plugs into the friggin' socket and then use that just to avoid that situation. And I would have my volume all the way down on the radio where it was still connected to the Bluetooth. And then the alarm goes off and I hear nothing because it's going through the Bluetooth and not back. That happened a couple of times. Now I'm kind of in the habit of turning Bluetooth off before I go to bed. Um, but yeah, that happened a couple of times. And if I would have been on a tight load and had to be up at this time and that would have happened, I probably would have got my first late. But I mean, you always hear about people saying, you know, you get a service failure, you're late for loads all the time and this, that and the other. I don't know how it happens. Like they give you plenty of time. I've had some tight loads. But I've never had anything happen where, like, you know what I mean? Like, I just didn't plan correctly. Like, it's not that hard. It's like, you got to be here at this time. My GPS is one of the ways I do it, guys. I actually, uh, like, let's just say I got to go to, I don't freaking know. What's around here that I can look up? Uh, let's go to saved. Here we go. Pocahontas, Illinois. 197 miles, right? Let's say if I'm going to there. This is how I kind of do it, and it's simple. Like, it takes nothing. Like, I don't do any sort of extreme timeline planning or anything. Okay, so to Pocahontas, Illinois is 
three hours and 56 minutes. Let's just say it's four hours, okay, just to make things easy. This is how I would normally do it. Let's say, you know, I ran through my time the day before and I stopped at the truck stop. Let's say my load is due at 8 a.m., right? I stop at the truck stop. So what I will do is I will look how much time do I have. This is this is basic stuff for you drivers. I'm mostly telling this for like new guys or whatever. Let's say that, you know, okay, it's going to take me four hours to get there. So I like to get there at least an hour early, depending on how far it is. Four hours, I'd probably just time it about an hour early. It's not that far. You know what I'm saying? If this was eight or nine hours, I'd probably give myself a couple extra hours cushion because more shit can happen on the road in that length of a run. You know what I'm saying? It's like if the place is 30 minutes from me, I'm going to leave with like 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Because I know that I'm going to be right there. Anyways, beside the point. So I will take that four hours and say, okay, I want to leave five hours before my appointment time because then that's the four hours plus the one hour I like to get early. That's five hours, correct? So eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I need to leave at three. Then I think, okay, I need time to get up, make coffee. I also like to wake up before I go. I'm not the type of person that wake up and 10 minutes later I'm in the driver's seat driving. No. Cannot do it. I don't like doing that. I wake up, I have to chill for a minute. I kind of wake up, I get on my phone for a little bit, then I start the coffee, you know, then I go ahead and after I drink a little bit of coffee, I go do my pre-trip and then, you know, I, I wake up a little bit. So what I will usually do is wake up an hour before I have to leave. That's just kind of my personal way of doing it. It has worked for me. This GPS is very accurate with the time it takes me to get places. It is very accurate. The only places it might differ a bit is in the mountains when and you're heavy and you're going really slow up the mountains, it can slow you down a bit. So you have to account for that if you're going to be going through the mountains. Or obviously, if you're going somewhere that has really heavy, heavy rush hour traffic and it's going to slow you down, obviously. But if it's just your normal drive, you know, not at freaking rush hour through a major super busy city that's known to back up, this is very accurate. I'm telling you, if I went from here right now to Pocahontas, it would take right at four hours, man. I'm telling you. Um, obviously, we are in Joliet right now, so you're going to have a little bit of traffic getting out, but the rest of the way is going to be smooth, you know, save for an accident or something crazy, crazy weather or whatever. But you know, that stuff you can kind of predict for as well. And that's just how I do it. That's just my way. And it, like I said, I have it actually set in here that I go 65 miles an hour. Let me see if I can show you guys here. Um, I forgot how to get there. I think it's under settings, vehicle profile. So it takes everything. It shows that I am 65 foot long, 13, six high, eight, six width, um, 50,000 pounds. Uh, you can change that. You can actually go in here and change all of that stuff. See? gross weight you can set it to 80,000 so then it will keep you off of those roads that have a lower weight l limit you know what I mean uh here we go max speed adjusts routing and arrival time for 65 miles an hour so let's say I'm in Texas and I'm going 70 or no, sorry I'm not going 75 but the speed limit is 75 the GPS knows the speed limit is 75 but it knows I can't go 75 so it's gonna put that I'm going six, uh, 65 which is my max speed so yeah kind of uh the way it works guys honestly all right guys so we are out of here now uh it also said in the the low notes that this gate to get out is pressure censored so Turn when i pull up to it Creek Boulevard. it should open there was so much information yeah it was so much information for this load i was like oh my god like this load was like just everything man <laughs> it was like do this and do that don't do this and honestly it wasn't much different than like anywhere else i guess and now there is a loves 36 minutes from here there's some pilots closer but you know loves doesn't charge cfi for uh showers but loves doesn't charge cfi for showers because we get showers you know bundled in with since we fuel there and then on top of that, you know, I pay for why I had another CFI right here. There was actually a guy when I picked up this load of CFI that picked up at the same time that I did. So I think uh, he must have come from the same place, too. It was probably the same guy I saw last night when I picked up this load. She was a lady. Three quarters of a mile. Turn right on Bulldog Road. 
there's quite a few lady drivers that uh She's, she's not sure where it is. She stopped there and looked and then kept going. She needs to watch that satellite, man, what she needs to be doing. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few female drivers that actually work for CFI. You'd be surprised. I mean, I know there's a lot of women truckers, period, but I probably see more with C... I, I see quite a bit with Prime, too. A lot of females work for Prime. I will say that. Half the time I pass a Prime truck, it's a, a lady driving. But I see a lot for CFI, too. Oh yeah, it's 30 through here. Anyway, so this started off just being like, there's another CFI right there, holy smokes. You know what, I bet all of our appointments were nine, and because I was there early, I got in and out nice and early. That was another lady. <laughs> and both of them females. Oh, I bet you they all get there right before their appointment time. Old Dave was in there at 6 friggin' 30, man. <laughs> Got in and out. They actually started on me about like 30 minutes after I checked it. Oh, we had a green light to take a right. I mean, we could take a right on red, but now we got to check. Oh, they're going to go. Yeah. I had the green light, but I missed it. Uh, Yeah, so I got in there. When did I get in there? About... I don't know, 6.30, 6.45. By the time I got out back out to my truck and was talking to y'all, I, uh, it, it was like 7. And I want to say they started on me like 7.30. We're done by 8. So, that was nice. I love going to play. I mean, it was a full truckload, too. It was, it was packed to the back, man. They unloaded me in 30 minutes. Turn right at the traffic light. See, my dad runs uh, the receiving department. He's like a receiving supervisor or whatever uh, where he works at in St. Louis. He works for a uh, warehouse. And it's actually like a big factory. They do woodworking, metalworking, all sorts of shit. But he runs the receiving there. And that's what he told me. He said, I can unload a full truck or a full trailer in 15 minutes. He was like, I got it down to a science. I'm fast. As long as, you know, you're polite to me when you come in and, uh, you know, do what we tell you to do and all is well, I'll have you unloaded in 15 minutes. But if you come in with an attitude and you're an asshole, trust me, I'm going to take my time. <laughs> that's what my dad said. So that's why old Dave is always nice when he goes into these shippers and receivers. I don't care what kind of BS they put me through. I always am uh, as nice as can be, man. Even if on the inside, I'm like, God dang it, I'm still like, nice as I can be, man, because... They have all the power, man. Your fate is in their hands. But anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. I'm heading down to the Loves. I only have an hour and a half left on my clock, so I doubt, highly doubt, they better not. CFI sends me a load. Um... I hope that they don't because with an hour and a half on my clock, you know, there ain't much I can do. And that just sets me up to stress about finding parking when I'm out of time, trying to PC somewhere. So anyways, all is good. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Let's take a spin to a foreign place. These open highways are calling our name. And now it's time for us to escape. Escape to a world we don't know. Escape into the great unknown. Escape to a world we don't know. Escape into the great unknown.